Hey everyone, this is Mike and welcome to my walkthrough for E10 Savage against the Shadow Keeper. And just like his name, Shadow Keeper, a lot of the mechanics are going to have to do about the shadows. And because of that, there could be a little bit of confusion here or there, especially because of how it is going to look from my perspective. I mean, it's actually not too bad. So just like with the previous boss, first ability is going to be doing is his Wraith White AoE. It's called Deep Shadow something else. I'm going to rewind real quick because I was too slow on the pause. So Deep Shadow Nova is going to be his Wraith White AoE. This one happens really quickly into the fight. So just like before, you can pre-shield before you pull the boss. Uh, and then you can basically just mitigate this as much as you want. There are two different forms of this boss, which is going to be while he's on the floor as well as while he's in the air or like standing upwards. He starts on the floor. So first mechanic he's gonna do is implosion and this is already going to be spawning one of his shadows. Now the shadow spawned right on top of my head, which is why it's a little bit difficult to see. But you have to think about the shadow in relation to the boss as being kind of like the tip of the spear. So the shadow where it spawns is kind of like the back of the boss. That is very important because the boss is going to do front and back or left and right mechanics. Uh, I'm hoping that some of the future examples in this video are going to be a little bit more clear for you to see. Um, as it is a very important mechanic to understand. Now, with the first implosion that he does, he can either do front or back cleaves. And the way you can see this is by the fact that he either raises his head, like he is doing here, or he raises his tail. So if he raises his head, you need to go towards the shadow. If he raises his tail, you need to move away from the shadow. In this case, he raises his head, which is why that we move towards the shadow. And then, as you can see, the shadow takes over the boss's hitbox, so to speak. After this, the boss stands up and grabs a sword. Whenever he does that, he's gonna do a gigantic AoE around him, so just disengage from the boss. And then jump back in. This animation is super delayed, so you can actually jump in relatively quickly. Then he's gonna do Giga Slash. Now, I made a small mistake here, or actually a pretty big mistake, by already pressing my cooldown, because I was expecting this was the Tank Buster. It isn't. Um, this is basically going to be a left or a right side cleave the side that he has his sword raised at is going to be where he cleaves but this goes together with a shadow and I didn't see the shadow from my perspective because it is right here behind the boss so you can't really see it over here meaning that you need to think shadow relative not boss relative so left side is gonna be cleaved so when you look at the shadow the left side of the shadow is going to cleave again because the shadow is basically in the same orientation as the boss uh, I don't necessarily have to think about anything because like nothing changes, but if say for example the shadow would have been on D and he then cleaves the left side, he will cleave the north side of the arena, so south side would have been safe. Uh, there will be better examples in the rest of our clear. Following this up is Umbra Smash. This is a tank buster which happens in two parts. The first part is going to be four slashes on the main tank, which will give you slashing vulnerability down as well as a magic vulnerability up, meaning that you need to tank swap this. We decided to invuln most of these um, because I made the mistake of pressing home gang on the previous mechanic. We just cool down through this one. It is possible to cool down through this, but you do need a lot of attention from your healers if you're planning to do so. Um, I would personally suggest you just use your invulns. The tank busters are fairly far apart, uh, so you can just use your invulns on, I think, all of them. Uh, even if you're running something like a Paladin and I think Gunbreaker is the other longest one. Following this up, the second part of this Tank Buster is going to be either a Tank Buster or a Group Share. So if it is Shadow's Edge, it will be a Tank Buster on the main tank. This is also a Line AoE, so make sure that you move away from that. If it is Shadow's Unleashed, then it's going to be a Group Stack. You can kind of try to remember it from Dark Knight's AoE, which is also called Unleash. Uh, so if he does Unleashed, just move to the group in the back as the main tank or like the person that just swapped away. Make sure that you're far enough away from that. It's a fairly big AoE and if you get hit, you're dead because you have the magic vulnerability up. If it is Shadow's Edge, just move to the side and then use some cooldowns if you are now the current main tank. This does hit fairly hard, but it is just important that you survive and seeing how you just swapped to being the main tank. You're gonna be full HP anyways. Um, so for example, what I like to do, I just use Thrill of Battle plus a Raw Intuition and that is enough to keep me alive and then I just use, for example, Equilibrium to heal me up for the following auto attacks. Then we go into Shadow Cleave. For this we all need to have our spread positions. Now we do this in a very bad way and I'm gonna explain how you can do this full uptime as well. But I'm gonna let the mechanic play out first and then I'll explain how you can do it with full uptime. 
Uh, we found out about the full uptime way before we cleared, but we decided to just stick to this because we already had it very consistent and we didn't want to like have some accidental wipes on this mechanic specifically, uh, which is why we just don't really care about our uptime too much. So first thing that will happen is everybody needs to be spread because we have those cleaves going out on us. After those cleaves resolve, everybody will spawn a shadow and when you get close to your shadow, they will cleave you and kill you. So very important that you stay away from your shadow. Then the shadows will be getting a number. This looks kind of like the limit cut numbers from uh, A11, for example. So you can either get number one, two, three, or nothing at all. And it's very important to look at what number you have because of the following mechanic. So over here, we are going to be getting a share marker, uh, which we are going to stack on the back. And this share marker will give you a magic vulnerability up. The clones, your shadows, when they take damage, they will also get a magic vulnerability up. So in other words, whenever your shadow is taking damage, you can't share the share AoE, which is why it's important to look at your shadow. So for the first AoE that goes off, players with number one need to stay out. So everybody with number one stays out for this first AoE over here. Once this goes off, players with two move out, one can move in, second AoE goes out, then players with three move out, and then two can move in again as well. And then if you have no number at all, you can just stay stacked in this share AoE all the time. Now after this, he's gonna cast Shadow Keeper. This will cause all of your clones to spawn behind you and do a cleave. So we just stack it up behind the boss. As soon as the cast bar resolves, we just move through. And as you can see, our shadows are just gonna do a big cleave in front of them. Uh, but seeing how everything was stacked up, it works just fine. I'm going to rewind real quick to show you how we can do this full uptime as well. Uh, full uptime is a little bit more risky, but I do believe that this will probably become the PF strat. Um, because it's, well, just as simple basically. Um, so for the first thing, instead of dropping your shadows all the way on the edge, you just drop them max melee range, because they will spawn a little bit behind you. And you'll see this in a next mechanic as well, that the shadows spawn about, let's say, uh, the length of a Lalafell behind you basically and then you just move into the middle of the arena if you need to stack. If you don't need to stack, you just run through the boss to the other side of the arena of where your shadow is, and then you can keep full uptime, and you don't have to disengage for one GCD uh, when the shadows appear, basically. So it is first AoE, number one out, second AoE, number two out, third AoE, number three out, if you don't have a number, you just stay stacked with the group at all times. Shadowkeeper casts, everybody stacks up, and we move through the boss. Do not get hit by the cleave of our ad. Then we go into another tank buster. So again, my paladin is going to use hallowed ground here, so that we don't have to worry about the damage. After the four hits, I provoke. If it's unleashed, it is going to be a group share. If it is Shadow's Edge, it is going to be a tank buster. It is Edge again, so I just point it away from the group and I use some cooldowns. Then the Shadow Servant, this is either going to target all of the DPS or the tanks or the healers first, and then it is going to reverse the role. So just basically look at who gets targeted first here uh, and who is going to be second. Then he'll do Giga Slash, which will again cleave one half of the arena, either left or right. Look at what side he is uh, raising, like for example here he's raising the left sword, meaning that he's gonna cleave the left side of the arena. Now, all of your players that got targeted by that little shadow puddle now have a shadow attached to them. The way that you look at this is you, the player, are the tip of the spear. So seeing how he is cleaving the left side of the arena, I am going to move to over here, because the shadow is behind me, I am looking forward, meaning that the boss is going to be pointing forward uh, when this mechanic resolves, and he's cleaving the left side of the arena. So that is why I am positioning myself over here. For example, my Astrologian that is over here will need to run towards the north side, uh, and then, for example, my Paladin is positioned correctly already as well. So that's how you can see where you need to stand. He can, of course, also raise his right hand, and when he does that, we would have had to reverse where we were standing. After they go out, you get bound for like two seconds or something like that, which is basically placing the shadow. Uh, and after the shadow has been placed, you can move into the middle to dodge these cleaves. And then after this, the other group goes. So seeing how we had healers and tanks first, the DPS get it now. 
This time he is raising his right hand, uh, meaning that the players will again have to position themselves correctly. Again, thinking the player is the tip of the spear, the boss is going to be facing this direction for our red mage over here, so the right side is going to be cleaved. This mechanic will also come back later, whilst we're also doing other mechanics at the same time, uh, so it's pretty important that you know how to handle this one. Then following this up, he is going to put away his sword and he's going to go back into dog mode where he's just standing on the floor and whenever he switches back into dog form, he's also going to do a knockback. You can use your knockback influence on this like sure cast or arm's length and later in the fight it will actually be very important that you use those as well because uh, they could kill you. If you decide to not use your knockback influence, make sure that you get knocked back into the corner um, because if you get knocked back just north, east, south or west, there's a high chance that you're going to be landing in the wall and the wall will kill you, uh, so get knocked back into a corner or just use your knockback invulns. Umbral Orbs is a new mechanic. This is going to be two tank busters as well as two group shares and you can see it depending on the color as well as the quantity of the orbs. So the purple orbs are going to be your tank busters, the orange orbs are going to be your group shares. So you basically have your tanks assigned to a purple orb and you split into two light parties for healers as well as the DPS. You have one healer with two DPS uh, for each of these orbs. Main important thing here is that you move closest to those orbs because they will fly to the closest person to them. So I'm going to be rotating to the purple orb. You'll see that we have one healer group over here on the orange. There is one healer group over here on the other orange and then our paladin is on the other side of the boss. You can always keep full uptime whenever this mechanic happens. So there is no need for you to move underneath your orb or something like that. Uh, you can just stay on the boss's hitbox. It's only for this mechanic that's going to happen right now uh, that you do have to drop your uptime for a little bit if you are a melee DPS. So the boss is going to be spawning four clones of him. He's going to be tethering one of them. You need to only pay attention to the one that gets tethered. I believe this is the same as in normal mode. And then he will jump around three... Four, after four jumps, they can either go forward or backwards, so pay attention to that. In this case, they moved backwards, so the one that is here behind me is going to be the actual boss that is going to be doing a mechanic. The mechanic that this clone will do will always be the same, which is the cleave in front of him. So basically the edge of the arena behind the original tethered clone, so to speak, is going to be your safe spot. Now together with this, we again have our umbral orbs, as you can see two healer shares, two tank busters. The location of these orbs is completely random. So as you can see, we have share, share, tank buster, tank buster. It could be group, tank, group, tank. It could be tank, tank, group, group in the other way around. Completely random, just adjust to where these orbs are located. You move behind this boss over here. So we have our two groups going on the left. We have our two tanks on the right. Use a cooldown for this, by the way, because they do hit fairly hard. And then try to position yourself almost on a straight line with the orb. Um, because we've had some issues, like for example if our paladin was in the corner, there was a high chance that I would get his tank buster as well. So just stand right in front of the orb uh, to make sure that everybody gets hit. So as you can see, everybody gets their orb on them. And that resolves this mechanic. Then we go into another raid wide AoE, the Ape Shadow Nova, so just put up some shields or some mitigation. And then Fade to Shadow. We started calling this mechanic Squiggly Lines, um, because the Squiggly Lines are the most important. So there are going to be two AoEs going off over here. Uh, one is gonna go fast, one is gonna go slow. The way you see this is by the shadow that is creeping towards like the puddle at the edge. You can also just very simply look at which one is the straight line, which one is the bend line. And the bend line is going to be your first safe spot. So in this case, either one or three is gonna be the safe spot because the boss is gonna do implosion. Again, look at where the shadow is. So the boss is pointing towards D. The boss is raising his tail, meaning that the backside of the boss is unsafe meaning that our B side, or our west side of the arena, is gonna, oh wait, that's technically east, I guess. Uh, the east side of the arena is gonna be unsafe, so everybody moves towards one. So this basically gets solved in two ways. First, you look at the two safe spots, in this case, one or three, 
then you look if it is front cleave or back cleave, and then you look at where the shadow is. So in this case, one is going to be our safe spot. As you can see, the shadow is going to take over our boss right here, which was cleaving the back, so this side is unsafe. And then we just stand here because these two things are going to explode. Once they explode, you need to move into the next safe spot um, because our bend lines reached their shadow and will now do their AoE as well. Later on, we'll see this mechanic a second time uh, with some other mechanics paired together with it as well. And then the boss also did a raid-wide AoE, so important that you have some mitigation for that. Another set of implosion this time around is going to do it four times in a row and it will always be the same. So if he raises his tail, again, know that the shadow is unsafe. If he raises his head, know that you need to go to the shadow itself. So in this case, he raises his tail. So we are going to position ourselves opposite to the shadow. Second shadow spawns, so we can already sort of move into place. Third shadow spawns, we move away from that. And then our fourth shadow, so we move away from that one as well. And then another raid-wide AoE. Over here, our boss is standing up again, meaning everybody has to move out. And then you can just jump back in. Another Umbra Smash, so Tank Buster. Uh, this time around, I'm just gonna home gang this one. Tank Swap after 4 hits. This time around we got unleashed, so as you can see, the main tank is just gonna move to the group. I moved out a little bit just in case I don't get clipped by this AoE, because uh, if you get clipped you will die. And then we go into the next mechanic, Void Gate. These are the towers, basically. This will also be lined up together with a Shadow Servant mechanic, which will either spawn on the DPS or on the tanks and the healers. It is random which groups get it first. Um, because the other way around will happen as well by the end of this mechanic. So what we did, we basically assigned each DPS to a tower, we assigned each tank and healer to a tower, and then if you get a clone, those people will adjust because they need to be someplace specifically around the arena. So in this case, because the DPS got the clones first, the tanks and healers jump into their towers, which in my case I was on B. Then you look at where your shadow is facing, and then you also look at which side the boss is raising his hand. In this case, the boss is cleaving the right side, meaning that all of our DPS players need to orient themselves correctly so that the boss can cleave the right side. This will also coincide together with the towers going off, so you basically run to the tower that you need to be in for the side that the boss is going to be cleaving. After these towers resolve, the DPS will get bound for just a second while it spawns the shadows. Then you move into the middle a little bit so that the shadows can go off. Everybody moves clockwise to go into the next set of towers. And then now the other group will get their shadows, in our case the tanks and the healers. As you can see, he is raising his right hand again, meaning that we are going to position ourselves with the boss cleaving right. Um, if you're kind of having trouble with orienting yourself, what you can do is just look away from where your uh, shadow is pointing, kind of. So in this case, the boss is gonna look towards this side for me, uh, so the right side will be unsafe. So if you orient yourself with the shadow, uh, this really isn't too bad to execute. Pitch bog. The first time around that this mechanic happens, we just put these away because we don't actually need to interact with these orbs whatsoever. In the later mechanic, we are gonna have to interact with these, uh, but I'll explain what these do uh, once you get there. For now, for this mechanic specifically, there are no no zones. Just stay away from them um, because bad things will happen. As you can see, umbral orbs are going to be spawning again. So just like before, purple orbs are tank busters. Orange orbs are healer slash party soaks, uh, and they will be spawning in the corners. Now, very important here is that you will use your arm's length, because the boss is going to go back into dog form, meaning that he's going to do a knockback. Uh, and if you get knocked back into either the wall or into one of those puddles, you are going to die. So it's very important to save your knockback invuln for this mechanic. Again, if you're a tank, use a cooldown, because these do quite hurt, and then, of course, healers 
uh, share the orange markers with the rest of their parties. Followed up by an implosion, again he is raising his tail, meaning that the shadow is unsafe. Uh, this time it's only going to be two implosions and not four, uh, so this one isn't too bad. And once this resolves, the puddles are also gone. Another deep shadow nova, so just mitigate this, rate white AoE. And then we go into another squiggly line mechanic, this time around with different mechanics. Shackled Apart is going to be tethering healers and tanks together with a few DPS players. And it is important that you stay on the opposite side of the boss as your Shackled Partner. Uh, this is basically the Restraining Order debuff from like A12 Savage that we saw over there first. Uh, just as a little bit of a different indicator. Basically, even if you're a melee and a tank on the other side, for example, if you stay max melee of the boss, uh, the tether won't break, which is the important part here. So just keep max melee if you are a melee player, just in case you are tethered to a tank. We have a north group and a south group, and we will basically adjust to where our safe spot is. So again, safe spot is going to be where the bend line is. So we move into our safe spot. Don't move too soon, uh, just give the other player on the other side enough time to adjust as well. Then Umbral Orbs will spawn. So again, these are your Tank Busters and Healer Shares. Location of these orbs is again completely random. The way that we handled it is for the next mechanic we will always move clockwise, but if for example the Tank Busters are on the same side and the Group Shares are on the same side, you might have to move anti-clockwise as well. So as the first AoE goes out, our tethers are going to go away, meaning that we can just adjust as necessary. We rotate clockwise if we have one on each side. And then for tanks again, use a cooldown because these do hurt quite a bit. And that will resolve the mechanic. Another Deep Shadow Nova, which is again the Raid White AoE. Then the boss is gonna stand up again, so move out of melee range, make sure you're far enough away for this. And then we're getting another Pitch Bog. This time around we're gonna be placing them a little bit different, so when it comes down to a healer or a ranged, place them inside of the corners, you can also place them a little bit differently, like here. Um, how you wanna place them is a little bit up to you, um, but just keep the middle clear. That's the most important here, so our melees are gonna be moving out a little bit more, because we're gonna need to do some stuff in the middle. So we place our puddles, we move back in, and then he's going to do four Giga Slashes. In this case, he is raising his right hand, meaning we need to be on the left side of the shadow, and this will repeat four times. So look at where the second shadow spawns, move to the left of that, move to the left of the next one, and then move to the left of the last one. Uh, this one I had a little bit of trouble with, uh, initially looking at where it is. Um, so yeah, it takes a little bit of practice basically to get used to the mechanic. After this one resolves, Voidgate Amplifier again. Basically, Voidgates were the towers. Amplifier means that you now need two people in one tower. And the way that we're going to do that is with our shadows. So when you run into these puddles, you are going to be getting a shadow. Very important, again, when your shadow spawns, it's going to cleave you, so you need to run away from that, where your shadow spawns, or well, if you're too close to your shadow, it will cleave, uh, so just run away from it. Then our void gates are going to be spawning, I'll let the mechanic play out first and then I'll explain it. Uh, then shadow keeper, which means that your shadows are going to teleport to you. Then cleaves, because shadow keeper happened. Then the gates go out. Then there are baited AoEs. We do this super badly uptime wise, but I do have a way that you can do it. And then we have another set of towers with close tethers. So this time around you need to be close to the tank or healer that you're tethered to. Uh, I made a mistake here because we had some confusion about how we we're gonna do this mechanic. And that basically resolves that one. So it's a real clusterfuck of mechanics. It is definitely the hardest mechanic in the whole fight. So I'm just gonna take it from the top. So when he casts Void Gate Amplifier, run towards the puddle that you spawned. After you take the puddle, you get kind of sucked into the middle. Make sure that you run out again, so that the shadow does not cleave you. 
Then you're gonna position yourself in front of the puddle. You can also stand on the edge of it. Uh, I preferred standing a little bit in front because the shadow spawns behind you, uh, so it gave you enough space. Uh, the reason why we rotate is because otherwise this thing could cleave you if you stand too close to it. Uh, for example, when it comes down to our healers and our range, they are taking the same puddle uh, that is next to where they dropped their darkness AoE. So we stand in front. Oh, very important thing to note, with Shadowkeeper, the clone will spawn behind you where you are facing. So we need to be facing the boss uh, if you want to like drop it behind you, so to speak. Uh, which is why I'm also standing a little bit in front, because I'm facing the boss, so my shadow will spawn behind me inside of the towers. Right as Shadow Keeper resolves, the shadows teleport behind you. As you can see, one spot in the tower is now taken up. Move away from your shadow to dodge the cleave. Don't move into the next tower yet. Wait for the cleave to resolve. Cleave resolves. Now you can move into the next tower. So everybody is now standing inside of a tower. Every shadow is now also standing into a tower. Then the shadows resolve. Shadowy Eruption is baited AoEs underneath you. It's very important that you bait these anywhere there is not a tower and anywhere there is not a Shadow Clone, because again, Shadow Clones take damage. So if you hit a clone, that person will die and then of course you can't do the next mechanic. Uh, what you can do here as a melee is very simply just drop it in the middle. Um, but we didn't think of that, we just ran away uh, and I just go to the end of the arena. Or the edge of the arena rather. Uh, you can just totally drop these in the middle if you want to do so as a melee player to keep up time. And then after you drop your puddles, move into your tower. I ran to the wrong tower because we assigned them a little bit weird uh, and I got some confusion over here. But basically, assign each tank and a healer to a tower. Then each tank and healer will be shackled together with a DPS, which is this green tether that you can see. And then we just had our DPS players adjust to where our tanks and healers were. Um, because we were in the wrong tower, as you can see, one tower is going to be exploding. Um, but one tower exploding isn't too bad, because every time a tower explodes, uh, you get this little debuff over here, this purple one, as well as a damage down. Uh, and if you get three of this debuff, you get Doom. If you get Doom, it's just game over at that point, because you will die. Uh, even a healer LB3 can't save you right there. Tank LB3 won't do anything for the damage either. So you can't really cheese this mechanic, so to speak. Um, so that is how that mechanic resolves. I'll just take it one more from the top because it is pretty complex and this will probably take a little while to get through it. So again, void gate amplifier, take your shadows, move to the next tower in front of it so that your shadow spawns behind you. Shadow keeper resolves, shadow teleports, you move away, wait for the cleave, cleave goes out, move into the tower, tower goes out, Move to a place where there are no shadows. Again, if you're a melee, you can drop these underneath the boss's hitbox. Move into your assigned tower if you're a tank or a healer. If you're a DPS, run towards the tank or the healer that you are tethered towards. Again, we do it wrong here. And then that will resolve the mechanic. After this one, there is another tank buster, so Umbra Smash. Um, at this point, our hallowed ground for a paladin is back. So you can just invuln all of these if you want. After four slashes, tank swap. I get Unleashed, meaning Unleashed was the group share, so I just throw it onto the group. And then we go into the next set of mechanics, which is just another Umbral Orbs. We almost killed the boss here, but I'll explain whatever comes after this. Uh, so just handle this as normal, boss is going to go back into dog form, meaning use knockback immunes. Tanks go to the purple orbs, DPS run to their... Uh, DPS and healers run to their assigned groups with the orange orbs. Now, after this resolves, there's just gonna be a bunch of raid white AoE spam. I think he does three raid white AoEs before he kills, uh, or before the enrage happens. Uh, so that's basically how that resolves. So we kill it over here. Um, but after this, there's not really that much more to come. There's just, I believe, three raid white AoEs. And that is pretty much going to be that. So that is the run through of E10 Savage. If you have any more questions, Feel free to leave them in the comments down below and I'll get back to you when I have the time because of course by the time this video goes live I will most likely be raiding again uh, to try and clear E11 Savage. So on that note I want to thank you for watching, I want to thank my Patreons for supporting me and I'll see you in the next one.